Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Open at Microsoft. In these kind of episodes, we are featuring great contributors like Matan over here that we are super excited to have with us on this episode. We will be talking about testing, testing library, and how awesome it is to contribute to open source. So be prepared for a very exciting episode about how we put the user in the focus when it comes to testing. So stay tuned and watch throughout this whole episode and you will see some great things, I promise you. So, uh, hey, Matan, um, we're super excited to have you on this episode of Open at Microsoft. And uh, yeah, testing libraries, right? Open source work, also super exciting. So could you tell our audience maybe a, a bit more about your work with open source and especially in the context of testing libraries? Yeah, so hey, Chris. Have, hey, everybody. Um, my work at open source started, I think, four years ago, something like that. Um, I'm mostly contributing to the testing library organization, which means that we have uh, the testing library uh, React, which is what most of the people actually use. Uh, but we have multiple packages within that organization. We have uh, Jest DOM, which uh, extends uh, expectations for uh, assertions in Jest. Um, and we have many more uh, uh, packages in this specific organization. So most of my work is there, but I'm also touching some areas that uh, rely that we rely on, such as uh, accessibility stuff uh, that we rely on inside testing. All right, super cool. So, and this is just me being very curious about this. I mean, I've been working a long time with front end library, and and I know how you know the excitement around building tools. So I'm kind of curious what drew you to these very libraries. Like testing isn't maybe the area that most developers say, yay, mm -hmm. I'm super excited. So I'm kind of interested to see your journey. Why, why these libraries? Yeah, so that's, that's a very good question because I wanted to get into open source for a while before starting a contribution. And I didn't know which uh, package I should probably go and contribute to. Uh, so I went with a, with a guide and I, and I looked and... They, people usually say, uh, try to contribute to uh, a package that you're using daily. And we, at my workplace, we used to, at my past workplace, we used to use uh, React Testing Library quite a lot. And I had many issues or many questions about React Testing Library. So I decided I'd go into uh, the issues inside the repo. And actually, I came to a realization that I can answer people's questions there. Uh, so I started uh, answering questions, and this was my first contribution. And, you know, when people talk about uh, open source contributions, they usually refer to code. But um, to be honest, and, and after four years being a part of the uh, testing library organization, a lot of work uh, is about triaging issues and answering uh, questions that people ask, or maybe uh, giving more references inside issues. And this is a valuable work that people don't really uh, appreciate. And, and I think this is, this is an amazing entrance to open source. And this is the way I entered a uh, testing library as an organization. Super cool. And I think you already gave out a, a couple of really good advices for, for people who are interested in starting with open source. You're saying stuff like start with your daily tool. That, don't just start at random. Take something that you care about, that you use daily. That's your entry port. And the other bit also, I think, is some people might be intimidated by, hey, I need to understand this library, so much code. But as you said, questions, documentation, and code, those are really valuable areas where you can start adding value today. So I think the main message here is don't be expected to build a big feature the first thing you do. Just being that helper is, is probably a really good entry port. So I think a lot of people probably know about testing, right? They might not know about React testing library. So let's say I'm a React developer, right? And and I've just started building my first React apps. Do you have something to maybe show us how, how that would work? How, how does it look? Like what is testing library versus all the other libraries out there? Yeah, so uh, as you can see on my screen now, um, uh, testing library is actually a set of simple and complete testing utilities that encourage good testing practices. And what does it mean, encourage good testing practices? Um, when testing React applications, uh, if we look back five years ago, uh, we probably used some tools like Enzyme uh, that were actually a bit prone to uh, implementation details testing. So, um, our guiding principle and Ken C. Dodds, which is the uh, person who actually created this uh, organization, uh, he says, the more your tests resemble the way your software is used, the more confidence they can give you. 
and I can't ex- I can't express how much I I value and appreciate this uh, quote because um, the more I start uh, realizing and, and adopting, the more I started realizing and adopting this uh, quote and this uh, guideline, uh, I realized that my tests suddenly aren't flaky as they used to be. Uh, suddenly I'm testing stuff and I'm also gaining uh, accessibility insights about my components because when I use testing library, I probably use uh, whatever the user is doing. So when I want to query an element, I query it by the role or I query it by the placeholder or the alt text. Uh, And these are stuff that we didn't even use uh, in order to query stuff before. Uh, If you remember, uh, before testing library actually entered the scene, uh, we used mostly class names uh, to query elements. And this is really flaky because what happened if I changed the class name? My test immediately broke, but changing a class name doesn't necessarily mean that my functionality broke, right? Um, So this is why I actually love testing library as an approach, as an idea. Yeah. Yeah, that that sounds really cool. So I'm I'm thinking to myself exactly what you were saying, right? You know, we start off with unit tests and we feel like we're really testing the implementation details where we should be testing elsewhere, right? This is more like test stuff on the edge, you know, exactly what you said and Ken Dodd say. If you got tests resembling how you use the app, then that kind of builds confidence. So... So what you're saying is essentially move all my testing from internals to more externals where I'm at the position of saying, oh, this is how components are actually being used, right? So it, what's your best advice for someone who wants to start with that type of testing? Because I think a lot of people have started off with unit testing because that's how we do things, right? So yeah, is, is there maybe some sample test that you can show us? Like here's how you could, could get started and here's how it looks different from your normal unit test yeah definitely so so i can see i can share my uh, project here that i've i've built um this is way well, i'll zoom in a bit um but uh this is an example app i've been using and I'm, i've built for a uh for a demo that i'm working on uh but the, the implementation doesn't really matter here let's see the actual ui okay uh so this is a pokedex i show pokemons um and you can see that what happens here maybe i'll refresh uh, we can see that what happens here is that I'm actually querying uh, an API to get 151 Pokemons, and I have all of them here, okay? And whenever I click on a Pokemon, what happens is, uh, let's click on Charmander, and I get all the details for Charmander, and I see the type, and I see the stats, and uh, the base moves, and I see the evolutions. So this is an example app, um, and if, if I see an app like this, and I want to start testing it, so how would I go on and test it? Uh, what I would do is I would probably ignore the implementation at all. Uh, let's say the implementation is a black box, entirely black box. And what I would do is I would look at the actual, I'll use inspect element, and I'll actually have a look at the, uh, at the accessibility insights I have on this specific page. Um, so just a second, I'll zoom in this one too. So let's say I want to test uh, this specific uh, element, okay? So I want to see I have a UL here. A UL is an unordered list. And I have uh, probably 151 uh, list items, right? Uh, so what I would probably do is I would try and query that, that, that I have uh, 151 list items. And instead of using the tag specifically, I know that an LI implies a list item role. So I would query for list item role. Um, and maybe we can have a look at the test for a second. Um, and this is this is my uh, test. And what happens here? Uh, you can see here, just a second, I'll zoom in a bit more. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here in this test, and this is using React Testing Library, of course. Um, I'm also using React Router in my app. And specifically for this uh, example, I'm also using Mock Service Worker. Mock Service Worker is an example, is a, an amazing uh, package to mock uh, network calls, okay? So what happens here is you see that I render the app. Uh, so basically rendering the component. I say that I'm uh, wrapping it with the browser router because I need a router specifically. Um, and we can see what happens here is I'm waiting for the loading element which means that I'm actually querying that the user now sees a loading element and I'm waiting. You can see here that I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting 
the loading element um, by get by alt text. So my loading element is an image. It has an alt text. Uh, so I'm also getting the uh, accessibility insights because uh, if the user can't see the image, uh, the user can see the alt text because if the user is currently using a screen reader, so the screen reader will read out loud uh, the alt text, the alternative text. Uh, so I'm querying for the loading element. I'm waiting to see if it's in the document. And then I'm using another utility uh, from within React Testing Library, which is called wait for element to be removed. So I'm waiting for the actual loader to be removed. And only then what I'm doing is I'm uh, querying get all by role, which means give me all the elements that have the role of link. And I'm using link here because uh, we can see here that I have a link. I have an anchor tag inside. So if I have 151 anchor tags, it means that I have 151 Pokemons. Okay? Uh, so this is the approach that I would take. I would try to understand the accessibility or how I can query elements by uh, accessibility stuff, accessibility insights, accessibility indicators, and not uh, on the class names, which I have here. Specifically, I'm using Tailwind, uh, which means that the class names doesn't mean, doesn't have any specific meaning. Okay? This is uh, super interesting. And I have to say, I really like how readable these tests are. Because if you look at unit tests, for example, right? A unit test could be like, that. do you parse this thing correctly from this to that? And it doesn't make a lot of sense to the user. But as a user, I can really relate to this because it's telling me, do I see a, a spinner, Chris, uh, when I'm trying to load my Pokemon? I mean, th that's something that we all see, right? It doesn't matter if we're a tech person or not. So I think a non-tech person would be able to go in here and say, I understand from a feature aspect what this one does, right? And then you have all these helpers to make sure that, you know, you're doing the call to, to Pokemons, it's showing the, the loader. And then uh, I think at the end there, you're trying to do some kind of assertion where you say, well, okay, now I've actually loaded all the Pokemons. That's why I'm looking yeah. for that link element. So I don't know if you agree with this, but, and these kind of tests makes it more readable and it's way closer to the actual user experience than the nitty gritty, the detail level that you're usually on with other types of tests? Uh, yeah, 100%. And and I totally agree. And when, when you talked, I, I actually realized something that uh, when we see unit tests, and usually when we talk about unit tests, people immediately talk about coverage, right? Because uh, people like to have their coverage rate high and they, they like to see 90% coverage. But as you mentioned, when I see a unit test, it doesn't mean anything to me that the input is X and the output is Y because it doesn't indicate anything to the user, in my opinion. Uh, what I'm looking for when I'm trying to work on a code base is I'm trying to see use case coverage. I'm trying to see that the, uh, the use case that the user can actually interact and work with are covered with tests, right? Uh, that's why I, I honestly don't really like um, coverage, test coverage. I like use case coverage. I think that's a really fantastic sentiment, right? You know, use case coverage over other types of coverage, because at the end of the day, we are building for the user, right? So this kind of testing is really putting the user at the center of things. Because this show and, and this episode in, in general is about open source, and you mentioned your really positive experiences of getting in there. So do you have some positive story that you want to share with other people to really, you know, motivate them to also try out open source, maybe something that happened to you as you were trying to, you know, contribute to, to testing library. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's a good question. So uh, I have a great experience, to be honest, about uh, testing library. And my first uh, contribution to testing library was actually a quite funny story, because uh, I saw a failing test uh, in React testing library. We're running tests against the current version of React, and we're also running tests against the experimental and canary versions of React. Uh, because we want to know that nothing uh, breaks, and that's also our way uh, to uh, help the React team. If we see issues in the next version, we go on and file an issue, of course. Uh, and we also have uh, a member of the React testing library, which is a core member of the React team. So we're quite coupled and tightly coupled there. Uh, so we'll know about things that happen and we'll also contribute back. Um, what happened to me was around uh, three or four years ago, uh, I tried to uh, make an implementation, a fix for an, for an issue we saw in the next version. Um, and I, I actually built a fix. It took me some time. It was code reviewed and merged. I went to sleep. 
And the morning after, I saw that uh, three uh, issues were open specifically on my release, specifically on the code with code snippets that I wrote. Uh, so that was quite a bummer. Um, and to be honest, uh, a week later, not a single character of my initial PR remained in the code base. And that taught me a valuable lesson, okay? Uh, I had fun. It was really nice and the interaction was good. And even though uh, not a single line of my, ca of my uh, commit remained in the code base, I still continued to contribute because the entire interaction with the people, with the maintainers there was so nice and they uh, wanted to help me and they wanted to uh, um, help me contribute again and they didn't let it uh, break me down. So this was a great experience. And besides that, I think that contributing to the document side or triaging issues is an amazing experience and it can be very, very valuable. So I, I think you all um, you told us a really valuable lesson, right? You know that it's not about you; it's not about your you know personal ego. Because if you come into open source thinking, "Hey, I'm going to write a few features, and you better understand how good I am," and you know that it's more about interacting with other people, right? Every time we write code. It's easy to think, hey, I'm going to build the next feature, the next awesome program, but you're actually interacting with a lot of people. And what makes you stay from what I hear is great interaction. And it sounds like you're really recommending to work with testing library in particular because of the people. So definitely. So I decide to sum things up. It sounds like if you want to go into open source, it sounds like you should focus on something that you work with daily because that's probably where you can add the most value, but be prepared to meet a lot of awesome people out there that wants to make things better. And it's not about you, but can, you can still have a really fantastic ride along the way working with other people. As you said, not a single line of code remained from that initial PR, mm -hmm. but the general experience is so good that you kept on wanting to contribute. And also not everything is about code. You can do so many things with updating docs, answering people's questions, that code is just one of many things, right? So with that yeah. said, huge thank you, Matan. We're really great grateful to have you here today to have you share your stories and i'm sure everyone watching is very interested in testing out the testing library and hopefully also to try to test out to work with open source so thank you so much <laughs> <laughs>